fungus. We're talking about foot fungus. Okay team, Posse Purple Podlings, this is a quick video to explain about athlete's foot, fungal toenails and just foot fungus in general, okay? I'm seeing a lot of fungal toenails at the moment. There's a lot of confusion about what fungal toenails are, how they start, how we fix them and all that sort of thing. So that's what I want to explain today and hopefully help you understand it. Now, Foot fungus is caused by an organism that's in the environment anyway. It's prevalent wherever you've got people basically. So gym floors, changing rooms, that sort of thing. You can't escape from it. And even if you successfully treat your foot fungus, then it's likely to come back because it's still present in the environment that you live in. Fungus always comes back. I always remember that from Dr. Ivan Bristow's lectures that I've been to many times. He's a leading like in, in dermatology and podiatry fields and he always says fungus always comes back because of the nature of the beast. So even if you are successful in treating it, you have to do lifestyle changes to make sure you stay rid of it. Okay, so if you get fungus on your skin, it's called athlete's foot. There's various kinds of athlete's foot. Let's not worry about versions of it. Sometimes they'll form little blisters. Sometimes they'll itch. Sometimes they won't, okay? But if athlete's foot hangs around on your skin for long enough, then you are at risk of it then secondarily invading your toenail. And it usually invades the toenail somewhere where there's been some damage typically at the corner or something like that. The most common type of uh, fungal infection will actually go underneath the nail and it's actually eating away at the junction of the nail plate with the nail bed and it's eating away the skin that attaches those two structures together. So it, whether you put your fungal treatment on the top of your nail, which is typically what people do, it's not going to penetrate, it's not going to work. So a lot of the treatments that we do as podiatrists are involved in trying to gain access to wherever um, the, the fungal organism is, okay? Right, and we do that in a number of ways. Now, depending on where in the nail the fungal problem is, if it's right back here, this is called the proximal nail fold up here, right? If your fungal infection is all the way back to your proximal nail fold here, then that is bad news because it means that we're not able to access it with anything that we just apply directly to the nail or around the nail structure. It needs something from the inside of the body to fight that off. So you have to end up taking a course of tablets called tabinafine or trade name Lamisil. It is out of uh, patent now, so a generic version is available. Uh, GPs don't generally like prescribing tabinafine because it does have a number of known side effects. Typically, an effect on taste, it makes your food taste metallic, so my patients tell me, and it can give you a gastrointestinal upset, like many medications can do. Every medication out there has side effects. GPs often want to send people to get a liver function test to make sure that their liver can handle this medication because your liver is the organ that actually enables you to excrete the byproducts of all the medications that we have. That includes paracetamol, it includes antibiotics, it includes anything that you swallow basically. Your liver's got to be capable of handling it. And so sometimes if you are already on a whole battery of other medications and that kind of thing, your GP, my, your doctor, physician, whatever you, you, know, you have in wherever you're living, uh, will want to send you for a liver function test more than likely before putting you on a course of tabinafine tablets. Okay, now, even if he puts you on those tabinafine tablets, in order to, cr to clear a fungal toenail infection like this, you're going to have to take them for three months. That's a tablet a day, every day for three months. So if you can't handle those side effects, that's the length of time you're going to have to put up with them for. So that's when I have a conversation with my patients when they come to me with a fungal toenail, is to say, how important is it to you to get rid of this fungal toenail infection? And let's not forget, we do the five minute fungus test here to make sure that that's what we're dealing with. One moment. 
In true blue piece of fashion, here's one I prepared earlier. We've done a few on this uh, sample here. But if you have a look at that, you'll see that there's two lines on that, um, what do you call that? Di di the, the, the test strip. Test strip, thank you. Um, there are two lines on that test strip. One is dark purple, one is kind of like pale pink. The pale pink one tells us that the test has worked. The dark purple one tells us that it's positive for dermatophytes. Now, most fungal toenails will be caused by some type of dermatophyte. It's a typical fungal organism or particular type of fungal organism. Don't worry about the technicalities. And those kinds of fungal infections do respond to tibidaphine one way or another. Now, as I say, if it's affecting the whole of the nail all the way back to the nail matrix here behind the proximal nail fold, then the course of tablets is what's required. If it's further forward, okay, if it's just in this distal part of the nail here, then we've got a couple of other options. You can either use some 40% urea cream under occlusion. That means you have to tape over it and keep it covered up so that the 40% um, urea cream is in contact with the nail all the time. And what that does is it liquefies the diseased part of the nail. It doesn't damage the healthy nail around. It just does the diseased part of the nail here and you scrape that off over a period of about 14 to 21 days, I believe. I've only had one patient that's actually um done that so far but anyway it, it's one of the options out there the other option is to have the whole toenail removed i know it sounds drastic you can have the whole toenail removed and then after that's healed up probably take a couple of weeks or so for the wound to fully heal up then you can start treating the nail bed and the rest of the skin on the foot with antifungal cream so that hopefully when the new nail grows back it's growing back fungus free your uh, third option is another treatment that we do here called nail fenestration, which is where we, I'm loving all my new colored pens for my whiteboard. Uh, so fenestration is where we drill, it's gonna sound gross, I know it, but don't worry. It's where we drill holes through the nail around where the fungus is affecting the toner. Why do we do that? And don't worry, we're very, skilled at doing this so I know it sounds gross but it's okay we drill through the nail so because the, that liquid can penetrate through the, the nail and then we get you putting that that liquid on the nail on a daily basis okay so ultimately that should grow out and it should grow fungus free and that is the way we approach fungal toenails so we start with accurate diagnosis got to make sure that we're dealing with a fungal toenail, not a psoriasis affected nail, not an injured nail, not a traumatically affected nail. We have to know that it's fungus. We can't go doing drastic things like getting people put on tablets if we're just making a best visual guess. That's never going to work. So starts with an accurate diagnosis. That's why you need to see your podiatrist. So your podiatrist can make you an accurate diagnosis and formulate a treatment plan that's going to work for you. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Bye for now from Potty Purple Potty. Bye.